Hey everybody, um, this is going to be weird. Hopefully um, the video and the audio all stays good. I am attempting to record to the cloud. Welcome back to the Union 0430 episode 45, everybody. Um, no special guest this week, just the four of us. Philly's watching, uh, I believe, Grey's Anatomy. Um, so um, yeah, he's, he's, he's took a knee tonight. He decided to uh, spend some QT with, with the missus. So you're stuck with the four of us. We got Dave up in Concordon, Ryan in Nova Scotia, and Mark still in God's country down in Newfoundland um, doing his thing. So, and of course I'm here in, in Kingston, Ontario. So fellas, I know um, many of the listeners in Canada are, are aware of it, but uh, I, I got to start it off with, with a Facebook post again. And, and the whole um, Ontario's in lockdown, meaning that you can't. Oh go to, my God. You we've, can't go to stores. What? Come on. We've we got a special guest. Oh, do we? Oh, we got a special home, guest. You're not We're letting live, homeless people in again. Live. Home, yeah. 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 Homeless yeah. guy again. Home, yeah. What's Whoa! I'll What's give going I'll on, give him man? Earpiece. Oh. This is COVID free earpiece. It's okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's good that you, you did that so your faces are right yeah. close. You know, normally you give like you give the ones you can't get enough of me. Out. You give the ones you're spread out, but you two like let's get uh, closer. Fucking true. We, we gotta go dark for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I drank it all. Oh. <laughs> What's going on, man? Oh, oh not much, buddy. Just uh, you know, in the neighborhood. So you gotta introduce him, Ryan. He's been on the episodes. Yeah, I pulled a bomb the last one. CC, CCFR uh, Fieldhouse. Not today. Not, Not today. today. Oh, no, ducks no, no, no. Just, just, the, oh. just ducks today. Yeah. Just ducks today. A man, a man of many hats. Um, for, for the people that are listening and not watching, it is uh, our homeless friend, Matt Cazera, <laughs> uh, down in Nova Scotia, Ryan's best friend, um, who's decided to come by. And, and a little bit of a spoiler, uh, because... Matt is a field rep for uh, the Canadian Coalition of Firearms Rights. Him and uh, somebody else from the CCFR will be joining us in a couple weeks, eh, Matty? Um, we're going to have you on the show and we're going to talk all things guns. So all you... I cannot all you wait. All you liberals out there, mark Look it out. on. Because you're going you're gonna to get triggered on this episode, I can promise you. <laughs> Yeah, you should yeah. stand on the other side of him, man. Uh, I don't think I can get up now. This is an awkward position. Man, oh, yeah. has to, man <laughs> many hats with very few pants. Talk to you later, boys. Nice seeing you. See hey, you, buddy. buddy. Yeah, cheerio. Get out of my house. Cheerio. cheerio. <laughs> I like that. And Ryan Scott. Hey, before we get too far on this Facebook post, that I wanted to, that topic I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about that post that Maddie Wilson sent us yesterday. Like that, how much more of this, or like, is this becoming more of a, of a thing now? And for the people that, that have no idea what we're talking about, it, it is uh, an old picture. And I, I would assume it was probably Maddie's dad or, or oh, someone oh, like that. Um, so, so an old photo, probably 20 years old, um, and, and they had been out hunting geese and, and they're holding some dead geese. And somebody, uh, a Karen, had uh, responded to his picture because he had used the hashtag wildlife photography, I think was the hashtag he used, right? Yeah. So of course this person got all offended because she's seen a dead goose and she is upset because um, he used the hashtag water or uh, wildlife photography. She's seen a picture of two men holding some dead geese and uh, she was quite disgusted by it. So I love Maddie's response. Um, I think it was very, uh, very responsible and very well uh, worded. Yeah, go Dave. 
Do you remember back in the day when your parents used to say, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all? Listen, Karen, <laughs> it took you more goddamn time to type a response than it did to just either keep on scrolling or block the account that offended you. Like, why waste yeah. the time and why waste his time with having to read that? You know what I mean? Like, if you don't have something nice to say, just block the account, skip it, shut the uh, fuck up. But not an airport, don't need to announce your departure, just block it and leave. <laughs> yep. Apparently, hashtag wildlife photographer belonged to her. Yeah. But how can a hashtag belong to somebody? Well, according to her, it belonged to her. And, oh, is that right? And oh, okay. it, the definition of it had to fall inside her head. <laughs> ah, right, right. She set the imaginary parameters. Exactly. I'm willing to bet yeah. she does not have the sole intellectual property to that. <laughs> Trying yeah. to have that discussion. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, Maddie brought up a, a really good point, uh, a, and I've used it in the past, but one that I, I sometimes forget to throw out often, and I think we should throw it out often, and that is, as hunters, we dump millions of dollars into conservation every year. Millions of dollars. And, and yeah, I get it. Um, you're, you don't like the look of, of dead animals. And I, and I understand that. Like there, there are some pictures out there and, and we've talk, talked about it on this show in the past. Um, but at the end of the day, it is, a, it is a thing. It happens. You're never going to stop it. So if you don't agree with it, I don't agree with Karen eating fucking granola all day long. But I don't get on her fucking Facebook and chime in about all the animal, all the plants that got hurt making her salad. That's a whole nother discussion. Yeah, I just no, but you know what I mean. Like, I if there's something that bugs me, I don't, I don't take time out of my day. Like my time, um, I put a value on it. I know a lot of other people don't think that is worth that much, but I value my time and, and spending time talking to someone that's like that. Yeah. I, I'm not even going to comment on it. I, I think the big picture that you were, you kind of brushed on there was the fact that billions of dollars come from hunters putting this money back in. Like, like these people doing Turkey photography in Ontario, like where did all that funding come from? You know what I mean? Like it's, that yeah. there's a huge source of funding for conservation is coming from the hunters and the fishermen and the yeah where did and the turkeys come from i was just gonna say yeah uh, in ontario yeah it wasn't from yeah. the photographers that's right <laughs> and and let's face it let let's face it like um du du is is a is an organization that um, have branded themselves as as conservationists, right? So so they take money from the hunter and from the conservationists, and they pool it together, and everybody wins. And and their that's their fucking mind frame, right? But look at all of the other organizations out there that are hunter backed. So Delta Waterfowl. Um, the NWTF, the CWTF, um, the, 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 the Bass Masters and all of these guys, these guys are dumping major, major money into these sports. And that money, you can call it for what, you can call it um, for whatever reason you want, but we dump the money in so we save that actual species so we can hunt it. Right, like that. That's 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 the workaround. That's that's the circle of life for a hunter. We're we're dumping money because we want that. We want it to stay. We don't want it to go the way to dodo bird. Does that make sense? Yeah, was it Wade Bourne? Every, used, everyone's not. No, no. Wade Wade Bourne used to say. Uh, I'm paraphrasing now, but it's like more dollars on the ground means more birds in the sky, right? So for habitat Absolutely. and everything, it's, 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 it's the truth. And like Mark 
brought up the perfect example about the wild turkey in Ontario. Like they were, there was nothing there. Even, even actually as we, we were in the Ottawa Valley, we used to live there, like where I used to live there. Um, in the seventies, there was an old fellow we used to hunt with in the seventies. You wouldn't see a Canada goose there. They had to reintroduce right. them. And it was, it was hunters and their initiative who got them. And now it's like, as far as Ontario goes, it's one of the premier spots to, to hunt Canada geese. Yeah, and 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 they're Canada's national bird too. Oh protect yeah, this species. Yeah, yeah, they've got their own coin. <laughs> the loony. <laughs> Wait a tick. Wait that, a second. Wait a second. No, no, it's it's it. I just wish. I just wish people were more, just took the time to educate themselves a little more. And I think this is what um, sort of plays into uh, a topic I wanted to talk with you guys about. And, and obviously the listeners would uh, take advantage of this. So I had, uh, I had sent out an email about a week and a half ago to a lot of the, well, to almost, I think pretty much everybody that's been a guest on the show. And I, I asked them, I was like, listen, you've been on the show. Hopefully you've listened to some other episodes um, and you've looked at us on YouTube or whatever it is. Do you have any advice that you'd like to, to pass on? Like something, because we want the show to grow. We want the show to become a show that waterfowlers um, across North America tune in to listen to the ramblings of us five fucking wing nuts. Um, so, you know what, Brad Saunders from Dixie Decoys, um, God love him, reached out to me and said, Damien, uh, I'd love to have a chat with you and, and go over some ideas and, and stuff, you know, th that I've noticed. So one of the questions he asked me today, uh, when we were chatting, he was like, you know, what, what is what is the union? Like, what is the union 0430? What's your goal? What are you trying to do with it? And I said, well, you know, obviously everything comes at like at some point we want to make money, right? Like we're not making any money, but we want to make money. We want it to generate money. We don't, we're not looking to become filthy rich, nor do we expect to become filthy rich, but we would like at least break even on it. I said, but we want to make sure that we're putting out some quality content that people are actually entertained and and walk away from an episode with either that was a good show because it was funny those guys are hilarious or i learned something about a product that i didn't know or i'm educated on how a hunter thinks and i think the education piece without us knowing that we're doing it I think that is one of the big things that personally what I think the union is doing is, is we're trying to educate because we talk about the douchebags that come up onto your blind and set up, you know, 15 minutes before legal and, and all those dickhead moves and stuff. And this is another opportunity for us to, to pass on that education. And, and that is simply, listen, we, we invest heavily into our hobby and and to chase some birds yeah and i mean there's like to kind of piggyback on that point like there's the people who don't know there's two kinds of people you know there's people who should know better and there's people who don't know and and so just because you have somebody you know who you know creates a situation where it could be a confrontation or you know find out whether they, they even know like hey like you know do you know, like, did you even ask for permission? Are you supposed to be here? Like, or is, is it somebody who has been around? They just, they're just being ignorant. They don't care. Like, so, you know, there's two kinds of uh, people for that kind of situation, really. So, and, and it's an open forum where we can express, you know, like this fall, I had a guy set up 57 yards based on the wind direction. They were 57 yards away in my shooting lane. I wonder if they even understood what they did. And I was so angry, I just kind of like walked away because they didn't want to say much. But maybe people don't understand what they're doing and they don't know like why it's wrong. They're just new to it or something. So 
hopefully we're educational. That's what I hope for. I mean, if I show up at a spot and there's someone in that spot, I'm going to move. I don't want my hunt to be ruined. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go somewhere else so we can have a decent hunt. I'm not mm -hmm. going to sit there in, in someone else's arc and ruin both the hunts. I, I was, at first, I was like, wow, <laughs> my hide must be fucking good. And then I kind of looked at my decoys and I went, no, definitely not. He's just being a dirt dickhead up there. So. <laughs> I had a I had a hunt in Ontario once. Uh, we had showed up, um, plenty of light. We had to walk the decoys in the field. Farmer said no truck, so we were good with that. Uh, nobody had asked for permission but us. So I'm not sure if you were on this hunt mark or not. It was down by uh, it was one of the Whitmore Whitmore fields down by the water. Yeah, I wasn't. Okay, and uh, so anyways, we had walked all the gear in. This thing was a three, four, five of us or so. So we haul it all in. We get there and we're like, oh man, like, like there's, there's decoys out there already. So we're like, nobody asked for permission. We got permission first. So we're like, we're, we're walking up there. We're, you know, we're fixing to kick somebody out of there and there's nobody there. We're like, so he, he's got like 15, 16, like shell decoys laying in the stubble. We're like, looking around like did somebody get hurt like there's a ditch behind us we're checking the ditch like there's nobody there's no no fresh footprints there's nothing so we're like well so we pick all these decoys up and we just tuck them in the ditch behind us so we set our spread up and it's probably about 10 minutes after shooting light and i hear something in the ditch behind us and then another guy hears it behind us too and we're like man there's like a coyote or I don't know, raccoon going something. No, it was the guy who owned those decoys. He had set them out the night before after the geese left, and he was crawling up the ditch. He was gonna hide in the ditch and jump shoot them after the ditch without farmer's permission. So, anyways, we told him, like, yeah, your decoys are piled right there. Yeah. So. <laughs> but like it's another method for people to learn that stuff. Like Lorianne Horse that we had on the show, she does that um, in field waterfowl event. And that some of the questions that came out of it, people would ask these questions like, hey, can I use a drone to scare geese off of one field into the field that I'm in? And like all the, you know, it's, it, it's great that we're getting all these educational pieces out there so that those questions can be answered. And that's- And, and 100% to the, new, to the new hunter that's brave enough to ask the question, because God knows that they ask it on these forums on Facebook, they get absolutely lambasted for asking a simple question. And people forget that at some point you need to be taught things in order to know it. Um, so to the new hunter, 100%. If, if you need to ask the questions or if you make a mistake, then own it. Own up to the fact that you made a mistake and oh, oh crap, sorry. Um, you know what? Hey, I was a new hunter and I done bonehead things when I was new too. Um, I, I get it. Now, to be fair, if you post something like a, to be fair, to be fair, if you post, a, <laughs> if you post a question like, "Hey guys, how do I set up?" Good on you. But if you're mm -hmm. that guy that posts a picture of your duck and say, "What kind of duck is this?" and it's a fucking grebe, yeah. I'm gonna grief you a bit, just a bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair. fair. Yeah. All you junior hunters out there listening, for the love of God, do not turn to Facebook for duck oh. identification. Yeah. Unless yeah. you've got thick skin or I don't know. Or you I, just don't care. Or you just don't care. If yeah. you, there's got to be, I think there's, mo I bet you 90 to 95% of the time it's people trolling. Yeah, there's, there's a few trolls going on. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, think it's, I think originally it was people legitimately asking and they got just shot down so hard that now it's just people trolling. But that the one though, there was one, I forget where it was, but it was in Ontario where someone shot a juvenile Drake Eider and they're like, hey, anyone know what this is? Like, legit, I'd, you'd have a fucking tough time identifying that. Yeah, I won't. I won't name names, but I know we'll someone. Get into that. We won't. Yeah, I know someone who once shot a hen hider and thought they shot the world's biggest black duck. But 
I'm not going to name that. <laughs> I know who that is. I know you know who that is. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bring that. that. We'll, we will bring that up in the future. I can promise you. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's this awesome. person may or may not be on in the future. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, no, and and that's great. And and you know what I, I what I what I wanted this conversation to, to kind of lead into was was the fact that we aren't, I, I'm pretty confident to say that I can speak for all of you and, and including Philly, even though he's here, like we're not here um, on this show trying to blow our chest off to, and, and come across as though we're these experts in hunting and waterfowling and we're to be all end all and, and write the Bible on it. I think for me, and, and again, I'm pretty confident I can speak for all of you, but correct me if I'm wrong, we want everybody to have just as much fun out there as what we have out there and, and do it as safely and as much fun as possible. And if this is, and if this is the means in order to get that across to people, and listen, I don't think there'd be a better compliment in the world right now than to have a new hunter um, message me and say, man, I listened to your show. I love it. You know what? I'm glad that you guys talked about that because I had no idea. Or even if it was an experience hunter and said, fuck, I've been doing this for 10 years. And now I know why people don't want to go hunting with me because I'm an idiot. You, you know what I mean? We're not experts. That's why we get experts on. 100%. Yeah. No matter how good you think you are, there's always someone better. Yeah. Surround yourself with good people, man. And, and we, we say it all the time, right? Like we bring on, and, and we're not willy nilly just gre- reaching out to folks either. Like, like we honestly do sit down and think about, can we get um, 45 minutes of conversation out of this person? Because if this person's not going to be able to, to come on and, and have fun and laugh with us and, and provide some type of information, then, then we won't. And, and listen, those people are out there. So, uh, and, and they're listening. So if you don't get an invite, you can ask, you know, but if you don't get told to come on, well, it's probably because we don't like it. No, I'm just joking. You, I don't know what you just said there because you mumbled it very quietly. Oh, good, good. I because I didn't, I didn't want it to come across. No, no, I'm just, I'm just joking around. Yeah. But, but seriously, we are like this is, this is exactly 100 percent who we are. We, we are just a group of buddies that that love hunting and 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 talking about it. And listen, we poke fun at other people. Yeah, I get it. Um, so, but in my 20 years experience in the army of leading. Uh, fellas, public shaming works. It's the best motivation of all, in my opinion. <laughs> Go ahead, so, Dave. Sorry, I cut you off. So the other thing we talk about is like people calling in and stuff. I don't know if you guys follow that Stephen Ranella, but today he posted a video of a podcast listener had the greatest trail cam video ever. And it's a video of a dude driving a tractor hawking his ass over the side taking a dump and that takes talent it takes talent but someone (laughs) sent that in to all of our listeners if you've got funny shit fucking send it to us bud yeah full send full Full send send. big time just Mm -hmm. gotta send it yeah we need content for our page too yeah fyi that farmer he full sended it Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. yeah no and and you know what and that and that's a brilliant point dave and like you look at our good friends down in, in uh, New Brunswick, uh, Maddie Wilson and those guys at East Coast Waterfowl Mafia, like their podcast, like, did you listen to their latest episode where they talked a lot about public land and, and, you know, I think those guys are trying to do the exact same thing we are and, and educate people, try and get some education out there and spread the word that, listen, like it's not, you can't just do whatever the hell you want to do. There are some some gentlemen's rules and legitimate rules that you need to follow. That's Matt, a, oh, go ahead, Mark. Sorry. 
I was gonna say that's that they, those guys got a, an entertaining podcast going on, you know, and and they do. Not only are they knowledgeable, obviously, in what they do because of who they are and where they've been, but they're funny. I mean, yeah. they 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 really take the piss out of each other too. So it's really good. Uh, I enjoy well, listening to it. I gotta say, ever. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maddie told a story about when he was in Arkansas for the World Duck Calling Championships, and he was talking to. Um, oh, Man, now I forget who he was talking to. Not Ronquist. Um, no, he was talking to Jimbo. And um, he was mentioning, like, you know, he's like, whenever I whenever I go on a hunt, he's like, I always ask, you know, with the hunting party, I'm like, if they mind if I take all my calls to call. It's like, dude, you're like a three-time world duck calling champion. Like, it's like, it's like asking Gretzky if he wants to come, if you mind if he yeah. skates on his team with you. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah of course we do. <laughs> Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah do it. <laughs> so I thought it was a pretty funny story. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to score any goals for you guys? Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And 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 I think I think we need I think we need way more of of that of, of promoting one another and and spreading the word about hey, these guys are doing something and you really should pay some attention to it because it is good. And, and I think we need to stop this, this infighting that, and, and we've said it a million times, we're our own worst enemies, but we need to start promoting and propping one another up. Listen, I said earlier that hunting isn't going to go away. It, I don't think it is going to go away. It's always going to be a part of life for, for people, but numbers are declining and we need to get those numbers up. We need to get them up. It, the, the 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 sport the activity relies on it and the species rely on the numbers to play into that money that we dump back into um into into the conservation we need those numbers the duck stamps like the money from the duck stamps that goes right back mm -hmm. to the, the money that that du raises and 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 that the predator control that Delta does through their fundraising in order and it all to make sure that there's still birds around. So but, yeah, go Ryan. But I, th I think that like, kind of like ties into a huge topic. We're kind of looking down the barrel here in the future is like, whenever this all ends, like the COVID stuff, like what are we going to look at on the other side? Like, how are we going to come out of it as far as like, as a hunting community, with regards to like how many outfitters are going to survive like i yeah. mean there's a lot of guys right now who can't afford not to have the border open this fall That's and right. then even the big operations what if this goes on for like i'm, I'm speculating i don't yeah, know any, but, of course um I mean, what if this goes on for another year after that or a year after that right like we we just don't know we don't have a crystal ball on this and also like you know you know great effort to, to du and delta doing all these online auctions and stuff but i i guarantee you they're not producing the money that they would for their live stuff in their, oh, cool. in their live and, events right like like so how you know when on the other side of this whenever that is we we as a as a uh you know as a brother and a sisterhood we got to go full force on, on every aspect we can yeah. financially to make sure this is we we come out of this uh unscathed as as much as unscathed as possible there's something Great. about being at a du dinner versus online where if damien's bidding on something and i've had a few beers and he's had a few beers there's no fucking way damien's getting that over me and then all of a sudden i look mm -hmm. at a 400 dollars bill and i'm going shit well that was a bit of fun but you know and it's you're not getting a license that. plate for four hundred dollars yeah <laughs> my wife has usually struck me by then so <laughs> so we had our banquet and uh du had that little it looked like a little army truck but for kids yeah yeah and there was a husband and wife and the husband's on our committee sorry andrew for talking about this but they were both on opposite sides of the room and they were fucking bidding against each other and so That's the awesome. husband's like what Four hundred. Well, me too. Like I want that, and the wife's like, "Oh, I told him that we're getting this no matter what," and she's bidding. And then finally, I was like, oh, "Guys, wicked!" Yeah, it wicked. was. <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. It, that's you don't get that with the online stuff, and people are getting 
bored of the online. It's the same online auction over and over and over again, right? So for everyone, yeah, it's the exact same one, or yeah. or it's none at all. I haven't seen any barely any DU stuff other than no. the other than the Norway one that was run up your way. Yeah, yeah. The problem with the DU one, and and listen, it's it it's no secret that I'm a big DU fan. Um, but the problem with the DU one, and and I get it that they're trying to accommodate everybody, but listen, um. I'm not buying um, the accent table, right? That like at the at the dinner, like I, I don't I don't want an accent table. I want another dozen decoys. I want another gun. I want so um, I appreciate what DU is doing, and I really really do. I appreciate what they're doing, and they're trying to. Um, be creative and Dave your committee done that with the Norwicks and that young girl Sadie which was amazing Sadie um, Sadie yeah. did it all Sadie 100% good work you're probably too young to listen to this podcast but amazing job Sadie yeah sorry That's absolutely and I and I love the fact that that there's committees that are that are trying to be creative in in new ways to, to bring it up. And, and when you have a child that's 11, 12 years old and they come and say, I want to raise some money um, for DU, it doesn't matter if it's tiddlywinks, um, you're going to allow that child to, to do it, right? It doesn't matter because the ultimate goal is to get money in. What I'm saying is that from the hunting standpoint, or from the hunter standpoint, I've got more DU prints that I, I don't even have any more room to put them up. I, I need more decoys. I need more. So we need to, that's where we need to, to, to shift our focus. Now, if you want to have a, a strong online fundraiser, then, then bring in some hunting stuff and a wide range of hunting stuff. That's what's going to get, that's what's going to uh, generate some money. I've seen Delta do some stuff and, and they've done some, some amazing uh, things, but again, it's the same stuff over and over and over. Right. So it's, it's kind of funny. Like, um, and I think we've talked about in previous episodes, they, they have like, I mean, both great organizations, like doing great yeah. things, like not saying I'm not putting one against the other, like, cause that's right. They're they're We need, we need both of them. Right. We equally, but they both have a different feel to it. Like for whatever reason, I always, take my wife to the du ones and she i think she she enjoyed them i think and mark and damien yeah. you guys we yeah. all used to bring wives to that one and the delta one was like was the dude's night out right yeah. like it was the hunting crew it wasn't yeah. wasn't your 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 significant other and it was just and there's more i mean you're right like there's 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 nice prints and stuff i i've, I've got one upstairs a nice a dog one like i love it um there's that kind of stuff that's what you want and and or carved decoys and stuff but the Delta one is like guns and swag and trips. It's more waterfowl oriented stuff, right? I, but I do have on my list of things from DU to get. And, and one of these days, and hopefully I, I don't drag my ass on this too long, is to get a Terry Ridland print before they're actually all gone. And, the, and you'll no more see the iconic Terry Ridland prints that DU's had. Um, one of those will be hung on my wall one of these days. I just, the bloody things are just so darn expensive. And, um, it, but one of these days I, I am having a Terry Ridland print on my wall. It's getting to me that the border's closed and we're not able to do events here. Meanwhile, you look and like Call of is happening and there's a, that big, um, I think Dive Bomb's putting on like a big uh, event. Like there's yep. all these events going on. And it's just like, oh man, I want to go to one of those. Like it, it all depends on your geography. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. if, you're, if you're in Texas, you know, you know, what COVID. And if you're in Ontario, well, too bad, so sad, right? So yeah. It's just the way um, it'll hey, hey, I, I put a I put a post on my own personal Facebook page today on on my thoughts on it and and uh, we don't need to get into it here but um people people really need to start looking outside of the box here um right now and, and trying to um come up with some some solutions i, I think um 
but that all goes back to what we started this episode with like if someone is posting that they're anti-mask or anti-vaccine or whatever the hell they're posting about and it doesn't well you don't believe in it yeah keep, keep scrolling mm. block them if yeah. you want yeah. whatever yeah but at the end of the day mm. it takes more time to start that fight than it does to just keep moving yeah so yeah 100 percent 100 percent boys um when I was doing the intro to the show, I brought it up and, and it is sort of kind of COVID related. So, uh, so hopefully we can get some good banter going here, but, um, so yes, sir, for the people that don't know, for the millions and millions of listeners that are outside of Ontario that don't know, we are under a, a, a friggin' lockdown again. So of course the premier of the province gets on the TV yesterday and says, yeah, you're locked down. Only essential services are, and holy smokes, Facebook hunt groups blew up. The government can't tell me I can't go hunting. It's essential for me to put food on my family's table. And all of these asinine fucking comments, the government's not saying you can't go out hunting. Actually, if you read into it and you listen, I think they're actually promoting you to get outside especially if you're doing it by yourself, i.e. turkey hunting for the spring turkey hunt. I think they're actually promoting it because they know that people are soon going to fucking crack up if they just sit in their house and do nothing. And all these people, and, and Chris Coke, I know, I know Chris listens to some of the shows, so I, I hope he, he, he listens to this one. But Chris Coke, who, who's an awesome dude, uh, Mark Ryan, you guys know him. Um, and he... And he had came on and said, listen, no one's canceling hunting. Just cool your jets, relax. And then there's all these other comments. And then, so you finally calm down that, that herd. And then Jimbo from fucking Peter Bro comes on and says, hey, we still love to go hunting. And then it all starts all over again. And, and yeah. it was, it was crazy yesterday in Facebook land here in Ontario. You get um, the dogs quieted and then somebody rings the doorbell. Again. <laughs> Good analogy. Yeah, yeah no, but. There's something man. fun about ringing that doorbell and getting the neighbor's dogs all wound up. Trolls. <laughs> right? Trolls for days. You know, but, so, so then, you know, maybe I'm naive because maybe I think people really don't know and maybe it is trolls. Maybe I'm just being naive and there's just fellas that just get a kick out of getting everybody all wound up and just sits back and eats their popcorn and, and reads the comments. I don't know. I want to bet the first guy that asked the question was legit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> After, After that, that the, the second of being a troll were pretty yeah. hot. Yeah, the second guy ordered a pizza, played master of puppets in the in the background, and just <laughs> yeah, it it is it is very likely that I'm just being naive and, and gullible and and thinking all these people just don't know the difference. But I don't know, man. Like, there's hey, there's, there's got to be a sacrificial lamb to yeah. be the first yeah. person to go ask, and then that's it. Yeah. The, lo the longer this all goes on, people are like, people are already at their max. And at the same know, time, it doesn't, it doesn't take much. Just going on with that, like at the same time, Facebook is the worst place to go ask a question about it. 100%. Yeah. You have friends. If you have friends that know anything about hunting or know someone that knows something about hunting, you're better off yeah. going that route. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, like you 99% you guys, of the time yeah like all the people that are listening I don't put questions on Facebook I ask these guys and I ask some pretty dumb questions sometimes and don't worry troll. for yeah. <laughs> for all you Facebook trolls out there we fucking give it to them don't you worry <laughs> yeah. but I, you know like yeah like I ask I ask some fucking dumb questions sometimes in uh, fact, I just would challenge everyone in Facebook to even burn the burn Damien as hard as we do. Like it's probably best we keep <laughs> our, our arsenal internal to the group and not. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I agree. I appreciate the fact that it stays within us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so I did want to tell you guys that I had an awesome day yesterday. So a buddy of mine, um, who is uh, one of the engineers with DU, I had uh, I had reached out to him and said, "Listen, I've got some, I've got some property that's not like it. It's not developable, right? So like you, you can't build a home on it. It'll never be residential." So um, I reached out to him about, you know, DU getting involved and, and maybe making this, you know, I'd hand over uh, some of this land to DU. I ultimately, um, if it works out, my hope is that I get a, a tax break from, from my land tax, um, which is highly unlikely, but it's worth a shot. Anyways, I don't think it's going to work because it's just too small of an area and DU tends to, to work in, in big, big areas uh, when they want to invest the money into uh, fixing the site up. But anyways, he was out nonetheless. Um, I think a bit disappointed once he seen how big the area was. <laughs> I think he was expecting me to offer up a little bit more. Um, but he did come out and give me an idea. So now I have the plan for my own duck set, my, my own duck factory. So we can call, we'll, we'll do a sign called a duck factory number We'll call two. it Habitat Farts. <laughs> nice, I like it. Nice. Yeah. So I'm curious how many people out there are, are doing the same thing? Like, are, I understand that there's a fair amount of money and, and work that's involved into it. and. And trust me, this isn't going to happen overnight. Um, but I wonder, is that something that many people do? Like, do they dream like I dream of being able to get two or three hunts out of a season, in a season, on my own property in and in a place that I've cultivated and made my own? I wonder, is, is, that a, is that a dream or is it just me? I dream of getting land like that one day. Yeah, mm. it's just hard to come by. Hard to come by the financials in order to acquire said land is what I think it boils down to. Yeah, like, like what I have is not a not the finished product. There's a lot of time and money that got to go into it. Um, but I own it, so I don't have to be in a rush. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not. It doesn't have to be. And you, guys, next year. you guys are on your forever home for the most yeah, part. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah. Like this is this is it for us, right? Yeah. So I don't I don't need to have that job finished for next fall. Do you know what I mean? Like I I got time is on my side yeah. with it. So I'm under no pressure, right? So like if if I've only got two thousand dollars this year to spend, well then I do two thousand dollars worth of work. Yeah, and that's like that's like Matt when he was here. Like he's got, he's they're in their forever home. They've got seventy acres. Like yeah, he's got deer on his property. So guess what he's gonna do? He's managing those that property for the deer, right? So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't have you've got a nice chunk of acres. You don't have seventy acres, but no, you don't need it either. Like, and you just happen to have a nice little little watering hole close to a quarry. Like yeah, you're, you're good to go. Like it's all you need. So you don't you don't need like hundred acres, but but uh, you just need the you need the right acreage. Yeah, you, you do. Yeah. Coming back full circle to where we started, like we talk about the money that people put in, but look at all the hunters that have bought land, and the first thing they do is, well, I'm going to put up a bunch of nest boxes, and yeah. and then oh, I'm going to make it more habitable for these animals to breed at, and I'm make sure that there's a healthy population, and it'll pay dividends in the fall, mm -hmm. but it pays dividends in the spring too, like. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you look at uh, Mark. I know you've looked at the property, and I'm pretty sure Ryan, you've looked at the property. But but remember, there was that I don't know, like 60, 70 acres of property that was that was outside of Ottawa there a couple of years ago. It, it was deemed non-developable. Um, it was just marshland and stuff. So an ex-army guy, Jason, uh, I forget his last name now, but ex-army guy. He bought it knowing full well that it's he'll never be able to develop it and, and turn a profit on it. But he loves hunting. He's created himself. Um, so he's a retired army guy. 
Now he's become a guide. Um, and, it, and it's a way to supplement. So he's bought up a piece of land that nobody wanted. And he's dumping money into it in order for it to produce birds. Like, who else? There's, there's nobody else in the world that's, that's going to... That is the worst investment you can ever think about. For a return on your money, it is the worst investment you could ever think about. But it's only a hunter that would, would think, listen, I'm going to buy this. And the few times a year that I'm going to get to harvest birds on it, but it's going to, you know, the turtles, the frogs, like all of the, the stuff that, that make up that watershed, the birds, the, the filtering of the, the fresh water into into your drinking water supply, all of the things that that property does, he's just bought it and, and is now protecting it. Whereas at some point when there was no other land left, some developer would have finally bought it and just absolutely dredged it all out mm -hmm. and, and put a parking lot on it. Who else besides a hunter would make that poor investment? An, an investment that get you get to use like a couple times a year, right? Yeah. That's right. in the fall, when you go to hunt, you can't hunt it every single day, like five weekends in a row, even like it, you hunt it and then you let it settle down. And you know, like, like what I'm, what I'm, my plan is what I'm building. If I get three, four hunts a season out of it. Yeah. I'm happy. There's a reason why you got to wait four weeks after putting corn down or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. so i just you know i think we need more i think we need more people trying to do what we're doing and i'm not saying we're doing it the best or, or anything like that um i just think we need more people talking about all of the good things that we do and not just we're out blasting birds because let's face it, we love blasting birds. Um, but the trickle down effect of us chasing those birds mm. benefits so many people. And, and I just wish people didn't, I guess, label us as, as barbaric and inhuman and stuff. Like, you know, it just, yeah. We just need we need more education out there, more people, more um, positive voices talking about the good things that we do. More education is going to lead to more honors. And that's what we need. Yeah, like we and we do about, need. Yeah. yeah, we've always talked about youth programs and mm -hmm. you know, how those often branch out to other people within that, you know, that youth member, their family. All of a sudden, you might hook an uncle or a mom or a dad that never hunted before now they're taking their kid out hunting because you know so yeah, I'm gonna put a, like that are key. i got a theory for you yeah Co covid is going to make more people get into hunting because it's one of the things that you can do and everywhere i look everyone's like hey I want to, where do I get my course? Hey, I want to get my course. I want to get this so I can look out, I can get food and I know how to do this in case. Yeah. Like if shit gets worse, like, and we're fighting over food, I want to be able to go to the bush and get my own. Like, I wonder, I would like to see the numbers once they started doing courses again, what happened? I would like to counter that and say, well, first of all, I agree with it, but I think the counter thing that's working against us is the current gun legislation. I think it's, becoming harder and for fire and we're going off topic and talk about a further episode but um i think it's people who are on the fence about acquiring a firearm are mm -hmm. now maybe a little more hesitant because i mean you know for no rhyme or reason uh, you know obviously the government lied to us because there's there's weapons that are banned um for hunting that have no mass <laughs> capacity for shooting like single shot <laughs> rifles like like no rhyme mm -hmm. or reason like no education mm -hmm. whatsoever. I, i'm gonna counter your counter with Ooh. yeah you see that I, that's well, well done. done a lot of these uh people because getting your hunting license is now an online thing 
in Ontario, like you just do your online course, these people are getting their hunting license going, well, fuck, I'll get one with a bow. Do you know how fucking hard it is to get one with a bow? You know, like go out and get a deer. And then a year from now, it's like, well, a bow is pretty hard. I'm, I'll just get my gun license. Would so anyone like to counter counter, 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 counter. That's a lot of yeah. counters. There we go. We're going for the That's a lot of counters. Yeah. The reason there's a lot of people in, in these COVID times that are interested in hunting is because they're not at work. I, I'm thinking it's more like the, they see the apocalypse, like the, the walking dead show. And they want to be the guy that goes into the bush and gets the squirrels for everybody. There is that too. Yeah, <laughs> there, there, there is that group of people that, that I, is thinking that. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to see the numbers and see if like the number of people in their mid twenties going out to get their hunting license has gone up. That's what I. Think. But I, but I, I'm, I tend to to be with Mark. I, I think there's a lot of people that's bored, um, bored and and a and a bunch of money sitting in their bank account. And, and they need something to do. And if getting their hunting license allows them and their best friend to get out and share a blind, I think people are going to do it. The, the follow on to that will come back full circle to exactly what we were talking, where we need more education because more hunters means now more people. So the, the, the 16 year old kid is, is awesome because the 16 year old kid is, is moldable. You can teach that that kid is a sponge and wants to know everything there is to know about hunting and why you're doing what you're doing. The 27 year old skinny jean wearer is already a special flower that, that doesn't need nobody telling them what they need to do. This is where the education needs to come in because there are, you, Dave, you're hundred percent right. There's a ton of people out there that are, that are fearing that the apocalypse is coming and they need to be able to figure out how to harvest their own food. I, I am 100% with you on it. The problem is that those people are now qualified to buy a gun and go out. So let here, here's a topic for you, and, and this one should, if people actually listen to the show, which, you know, there's five or six of them. Um, the day that Ontario got rid of the mandatory turkey course was the day that you just opened the floodgates for idiots to start running around in the woods with a gun. Yeah, that's a great example. Anybody who ever thought that course was a money grab... Yeah, no, never ran into some somebody never did a turkey course. That that was the worst thing that that the Ontario government could have done, especially for turkey. It went from a course training people to Facebook training people. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. What could go wrong? Nothing and we all. talk about trolls and stuff, and like people posting for just to get people riled up. I'll bet you half of those posts with people that posted at hen. We're legit. Like, look at the look I at my agree. first Tom. Yeah, <laughs> I got my first turkey. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I agree with you. One hundred percent. That that was legit. And you know what? I'm. And this is the one thing that I am happy about is that I never heard about a ton of accidents, about fatal or near fatal accidents. Mm. There was a lot of wrong birds shot, and and I'm not saying that that's okay. But in comparison to what I, what my biggest fear was, and my biggest fear was that people were walking out into the woods that weren't experienced and seeing anything that sounded like a, or hearing anything that sounded like a gobble and anything that moved and looked like a turkey was getting shot at. And that was what my big, big fears were. Mark and I did the turkey course together in Ontario. Probably, it was probably the last year they offered it. And do you, I don't know if you remember, I, I vividly remember this video and it was, it was the whole video was like the do's and don'ts. And it was the don'ts was these two guys and they were just separate hunters on their own. And they're constantly like, like doing things like running into each other and having these incidents. And one of the incidents was his buddy, one of the guys like Hunter a was set up you know, his decoy set up. 
like he's using a tom decoy and hunter b is like creeping through the woods and he's got a decoy on his back and he sees this tom decoy and he goes prone and he starts stalking the decoy and then the <laughs> other hunter sees his decoy on his back but doesn't <laughs> yeah, and he trouble. ends up shooting he ends up shooting the decoy off the back and i was just like man like that's like one of those things you see in the military and they have these really 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 simple directions written on something and you know why yep point toward yeah enemy. because somebody don't because somebody yeah. did it <laughs> somebody hey, boys, <laughs> hey i taught ex i taught explosives mm -hmm. for years and part of my safety brief the first day to having students was don't eat the c4 <laughs> do you know why because somebody tried to eat C4 one day. So Just what like did it gum. taste like? So well, I, I don't know what it tastes like, but yeah. I can tell you that that person had a very, very rough couple of days. <laughs> hey, well, have you ever seen that thing? Like back in the 1950s, the owner's manual on a car used to tell you how to change the spark plugs. And nowadays it just tells you don't drink the battery acid or whatever the hell it says. <laughs> don't, drink yeah. the cool. yeah. well, don't drink the yeah. coolant. Yeah. Like, or, or now now you have to child proof the the fucking tide the tide pod uh, tide container yeah. right hey you know, they did a good yeah, job with that yeah tell me about it i had to work like a dog to get fucking laundry detergent now but that uh that turkey course when it talks about like the guy walking and he sees the tom like man if you see a tom and that thing doesn't fuck right off it's probably a decoy like if you've seen it it's probably seen you if you're walking like, man, I, uh, maybe for inexperienced, it's different. But if you have any bit of experience whatsoever with live animals, you can tell the difference between a live animal and a decoy. Usually when you look at something... Well, and you see, yeah, there's see always it. that split second, right? There's that split Here. second where... Like You're even duck hunting. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, like, like uh, an experienced hunter is not holy shit and pulling up and shooting right away. Um, but like even, even duck hunting, like if you, if you're out into a popular area and you hear a call and you, there's that split second, is that somebody calling or was that a, sometimes it's very easy to tell. And then there's sometimes when you've got, when you're surrounded by some good callers and you've got to, you've got to do that double check, right? So, um, that would be the same, you know, an experienced hunter when it comes to Turkey, um, they may see something move out of the corner of their eyes and they're like, is that a Tom? But then they got to do that, that double take, right? Oh, mm -hmm. no, that's a decoy. You look at uh, John Lockwood I, and I don't think John Lockwood is doing uh, the turkey toques anymore. Um, I think he gave up on that business, but that was a, a solid idea. It just didn't take off. Mm -hmm. But those, those toques were orange for the simple reason that when you're walking out of the woods, the head of the turkey is covered because there are idiots that'll see a bird on somebody's back and go, whoa, there's a big old Tom right there. Yeah. Spread wings on somebody's back. Like, that's a natural yeah. position. You know. Did uh, any of you guys listen to the Meat Eater podcast? No, I no. haven't. So uh, they had a, guy, I had a guy on there the other day. He's a, he was like five different types of turkey calling champion. But he could do all his calls by mouth. He didn't need a, a diaphragm. Diaphragm. And he didn't yeah. need a call. He could sit there just with his mouth and he can gobble and everything. He's been shot twice in his life. Oh Preston, my God. Turkey Pre hunting. Preston Pittman? Yeah. The, what yeah, is he called? Awesome. Preston Pittman. Preston he's got a Pittman. nickname though. Oh. Doc, doctor awesome. something. <laughs> but uh, Preston Pittman. Yeah. Probably needs a doctor at all times. <laughs> so anyway, he got shot the first time. Some Jeez. some young fella shot him. Broke the table. Again. Walked up from behind, the table. and he seen him at the he seen the guy at the last second and turtled, and he got shot in the back and shoulder. And uh, anyway, so that one was pretty good. A lot of those pelts penetrated pretty good. He got up, went over, confronted the 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 kid or whoever it was. The kid pointed the gun at him when he confronted him. So he took the kid took the gun from the kid. He still has that gun to this day, I think 35 years later. And anyway, so that, so that happened. He went to the hospital and had some pellets taken out, but they left most of them in. He got shot again like three years later. 
And this time the guy shot him and the guy was just devastated. He, he dropped his gun. He, he, yeah. and that, that, that day he quit hunting. Yeah. Which it, is it, what I would do. No, yeah, it, it took, the, it took the guy that, uh, what's his name? Pittman that yeah. it took him to get that guy to go hunting again. He, he got him back into hunting. Wow. Mm-hmm. Talk about forgiveness too. Yeah. But the second time he got shot, he's like, no, no worries. I've been through this before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it happens all the time. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is old hat for me, yeah. but that's what I, I would never touch a gun again. No. <laughs> oh man. That'd be bad. That's my you number know? one fear. Like hunting over dogs and stuff like that, man. Like I'm paranoid. Like I'm checking my safety 300 times a hunt. Like I don't but want to. You don't know. How many times, I guess you guys do, because you probably do it yourself. I don't know how many times I check my safety when I'm on, when I'm on a hunt. Like, I think I'm constantly, constantly just because, and, and it's easy for me, 20 years in the military, and I understand how, how you can get ramped up and you can get excited and, and sometimes... Um, complacency sits in and, and, and sets in and and you may get excited and you may forget right so it's just common nature for me to just always double check right and there was always that fear in the army that when you had blanks that you were accidentally going to set one off and when you were a young fella uh, that $800 charge um, that ate up uh, a good portion of your month's pay um, so so you were always scared to never have that. So you were always checking your safety and, and I am still to this day. And now I'm teaching my son. So he's got his pellet gun and, and he's out with it and, and stuff. And I, and I'm, I drill it into him. I'm like, listen, you need to be constantly checking that safety and, and making sure that you know your, your little part of the world that you're as safe as you can be. And, and we need to keep pushing that on people. Do you teach him to check the guy beside him safety? To check what? Sorry. So like when I hunt with my son, yeah. I whenever there's a group of kids, I'm always looking at all the guns, making sure they're all safe from where I am, right? And I told mm-hmm. my son, I said, "Listen, if you ever look and you see someone if it's nothing's going on and you look and you see their gun doesn't have the safety on, tell them like talk yeah. to them and yeah. you'd be surprised how many people wouldn't be able to look at someone else and be like, Hey bud, you know, you're, you're, you're not safe right now. You're not unsafe. Like tell them like it, they want to be on safe. Yeah. It, they might, it might've slipped. Hey, but yeah. I've hunted with 65 year old men who are not safe. Nope. And yeah. to the point where everything about, when I'm hunting with that person makes me double check everything they do. I've had, I've had, a, uh, I've had a, a gun unloaded while it was pointing at my stomach on the tailgate of a truck. They just laid the gun down, started unloading it, pointing the shotgun, right? It was pointing right at my gut. I couldn't even say anything because I was afraid if I said something, he'd put his hand yeah. on the trigger or something. Wow. I kind of just sat there and watched it happen. <laughs> right. And then after I said something, wow. <laughs> Sorry about Mark. I didn't know you were there. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't have a problem because like I'll even say it. So I'll, I've said it to Mark. I've said it to Ryan and Dave and, and I'll say it to you too. Like if we're, if we're hunting in my boat and we knock down birds and then I need to move the boat or I need to get the dog or, or we need to shift our positioning unload i don't give a fuck if it's you guys i'll ask you hey is your gun on safe because like i'm not moving the boat i'm not like and and that could be and and you guys are very experienced and i'm very comfortable and confident with you guys but i'll still ask you got your gun on safe Mm -hmm. before i even even move the boat because i understand i listen I get the fact you may forget to put your gun on safe. It, it happens. There's no shame in that. But don't take it as an insult if I ask you, is yeah. your gun on safe? Because I'll ask it to anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. 
so the, but the two things there is number one, don't be offended if someone asks you to go safe because they're looking out for everyone's safety. And number two, yeah. have the fucking gumption to actually say, Hey bud, your gun's not unsafe. Mm-hmm. Like both of those things are good. Good to have out there. Right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with talking about firearm safety with people. Yeah. If you're unsure sure, or they're making you nervous because of their unsafe practices. That's a discussion that you got to be willing to have. Yep. And and then then that immediately becomes number one, number one priority because sometimes people the number one priority in their mind when they're handling a firearm is not always the safety of that firearm. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're thinking, okay, we're here to kill something, I'm going to kill something, and that's what they're thinking. But when the number when you're handling a firearm, like a lot of other things you handle in life, safety is the most important thing first. Then comes the other stuff. Waterfowl hunting yeah. seems to be. <laughs> a lot more dangerous with for, with regards to having those kind of incidents because of the the level of excitement you have a semi-auto at, right so you have like especially with new guys like mark talks about like 65 year old guy well i've seen and we've but we've all seen the, the newer guy in the 20s who has an experience has experienced a lot of waterfowl and you get 200 canadas tucked and committed and you know they fire a couple shots off there's still one left in the spout and they're they're up in arms they can't believe what they said they don't know the status of their gun you know they don't know mm-hmm. if there's a shell in it still is the safety on or off right so because their yeah. vision goes like this and it's not about gun safety is now secondary because of what just happened and it's easy for that to happen because it, it can get extremely yeah. extremely exciting that's what i love about water yeah. but mm-hmm. as far as gun yeah. safety and when i go again when we when we instruct youth a lot you know i've seen like me and mark have mentored a lot of kids like we've had flocks like do it perfectly the kids like drop like 10 11 birds like we're high five and we're loving it. it's great but the first thing we'll say before me and mark get out of the blinds all right guys guys gals like everybody put your guns on safe check your status right when everybody hands off yeah, we'll put your guns in the air when you're when it's on safe, and then you know we'll go forward and get the birds or whatever, or we'll let the dog go. But you know, it's just it's so easy. Waterfowl hunting is that sport where it's it's paramount. And like like we were talking about earlier, it's got that one accident like can ruin a ruin a life. It can if it's if it's you that caused that yeah. accident. I know, like me personally, I share Damon's opinion. Like if that ever happened to you, man, I'd be I, I couldn't do it. I would sell my my gear the next day. Like it would just yeah. it would destroy me. That's why I quit 100%. rifle hunting deer. That's I was yeah. uh, I didn't shoot anybody, but I was uh, sitting in my stand on private property and right on that path where a guy a guy started walking the path that I knew the deer were on, and he wasn't wearing his hunter's orange, and I scoped him. I was on safe, but I scoped him, and I I was like, what the fuck? And I I saw his glasses, and I set the gun down, and I waited for him to walk in front of my stand, and then asked him yeah. how his day was going, and sent him on his way but i just said you know what i yeah, don't need scary to... man the amount of trespassers with rifle season screw it yeah so. boys i i really don't want to to cut us off because i think this is this is awesome and i think something that we could uh we could dive deeper in and and even to get philly involved because i'm sure there'd be a bunch of uh expletives and 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 talking about how big his boat is and the fact that he takes pictures and, and has a chocolate dog and stuff, we'd get all that too. Um, but, um, you know, we're at that, that 60 odd minute mark. And, and I think uh, we touched on a ton of things tonight. And if this was the first episode that anybody has ever listened to of, of the Union 0430, I, I hope it gives you an idea of, of just who we are and what we're about. Um, and I keep saying it and, and through osmosis, I, I'm hoping everybody gets it that we're not pretending to be anybody that we're not. Um, we are 100% as advertised, just a bunch of friends that love hanging out, love one another's company. And, and we have our opinions. You can disagree with us and we're okay with you disagreeing with us. Um, and I think we can just have a civil conversation and, and we can figure it out. Um, it's officially spring because I'm getting mosquitoes. Um, so, fellas, awesome show as always. Um, Dave. Nope, good episode, guys. Can't wait to 
see you next week. Brian. Same as always. Good to catch up. Um, always stay in touch and all that and keep, keep on trucking. Keep on trucking. Mark. Chat boys. As per. It's always as easy. per he says. Um, a couple of big things out of this episode. Just like Dave said, if you've got some funny stuff that you think the world should see or hear about, tell us. Just like that post from Steve Ranella and, and the Mediator. That's awesome stuff. Listen, please be vocal. Please contact us. You can contact any of us. Ryan Bro, Mark Bitch, Dave Palmer, Damian Pittman, Phil Christian. You search for us and and we're the only ones with these names. Trust me. Um, you will find us. And, and shoot us a message. Tell us what you think. And as long as you're being, it, it's a constructive criticism, we're going to listen. If you tell us we're idiots, well, then we're, we're really going to just fuck you off. But if, if, if you have some suggestions or something that you think needs to be shared with the community, then send it in because we'd love to hear from you. Fellas, it was great hanging out, which is, again, I love it. Um, this is my... This is my uh, my muse, for lack of a better term. Big love, everybody. We'll see you all next week.